living God. Please, can you take your seat? Welcome to another Friday, another evening service. Today, we'll be talking about Living Healthy Seminar. In line with our team to have a healthy lifestyle and our bishop, bishop's desire that we imbibe a healthy lifestyle, we'll be giving a talk on nutrition and diet this evening. To talk to us, is a dietitian, an in-house, not borrowed. She's Mrs. Olatunde Olatumide. She's a clinical dietitian. She's the co-founder of Novat Nutrition Value Awareness Team, an NGO with a major objective to enlighten and educate people about what they eat. She specializes in medical nutrition therapy and has over the years successfully helped individuals achieve their nutrition goals. In my course of ministry to patients, people have always asked, what should they eat? Doctor, what do I eat? A lot of people are concerned about what they should eat. So this evening, you have the privilege of listening to an expert on nutrition and diet. So please, can you help me welcome to the podium, Mrs. Olatunde Olatumide, a seasoned dietitian nutritionist. A round of applause for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, my dear sister. You are welcome. Praise the Lord. It's a privilege to be here to have a semin seminar on healthy living. And the truth is that we cannot titrate healthy living and take away diet. That's what we eat. So that buttress the saying that says you are what you eat. Right? And I'm going to start from Todd John, verse 2. It's only one chapter. I said, Beloved, I wish above all things, KJV, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And I love, the, I love the NLT version that says, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. So today I'll be doing something that is more specific. You know when you talk of diet, when you talk of food, you can have a lot of vast, you know, vast environments, vast topics in nutrition. So I just want to go a little bit more specific to something very salient among every individual, both young and old, and that is nutrition to prevent hyperlipidemia. So go with me as we run through the slide, and I hope you gain something important. Now, I said nutrition to prevent hyperlipidemia. There's nothing difficult about it. It's just pronounced hyperlipidemia, which is simply the presence of excess fat, that's cholesterol or lipid in the blood. Now, these fats, they are synthesized by the liver. Our liver, the way God created it, synthesizes um, fat, the cholesterol, and also we eat it in the food that we consume. Foods that have cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fats, can raise your blood cholesterol level. Now, the sincere truth is that cholesterol on its own is not bad. Your body needs this cholesterol to make hormones, vitamin D, digestive fluids. It also helps your organ function properly. But it has to be in the right amount. Right amount. You know, anything above normal is abnormal. The body transports this fat. Now, this is a bit technical in explanation, but I just have to mention this so that you understand my destination. Now, the body, this fat that you eat, there's a way the body transports it. And it's like a balloon, or I would say, we say a balloon, like a bubble of water. That whenever it sends the fat in your body, it, it absorbs the fat in and transports it to where it is needed. And so that's the grammar that is stated there. Right? The body transports fat and, and cholesterol by coating them with a water-soluble bubble of protein. Now that bubble that I mentioned is what we call lipoprotein. Don't worry, don't cram it, but you understand why. If you have too many lipids, that's fat in your body, they can cause harm. That's the whole essence of this gist. The extra lipid starts to build up in your arteries. Now if you check the picture on our slide, you can see that's a picture of arteries. And if you can remember our elementary biology, we talk of um, veins and arteries. That's the pipe, let me use the word pipe, that carries blood to your heart and away from your heart. Have I lost you? Thank you. Now, because of the importance, and you know, the heart supplies blood to all over the body. True of us. True. The heart supplies its nutrients, oxygen, and whatever to every part of the body. If there's any obstruction, there will be a problem. And that is why it is important that whatever that we clog the heart, whatever that we prevent the heart, the arteries, sorry, from free flow of blood, then there's a question mark. Now, this plague might not cause any problem for years. But over the time, the plague silently gets bigger. Please, be, this slide, before the slides are. Over the time, the plague silently gets bigger and bigger within your arteries, like we can see there. Those extra lipids in your blood help make the plague, plague bigger without you even knowing it. Now, I want to read from Leviticus chapter 4, verse 31. Knowing the environment where I am. Let me pick my, you know, my structure from the Bible. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 31, NLT says, They shall remove all the fat, just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering. And the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 7, verse 23 and 24. 
the KJV version. It says, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, of sheep, or of goat. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beast may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat it. So, before I even go ahead, the summary of all these gistes, I want to also address our choices in what we eat, just to prevent this hyperlipidemia. Some of us are even having high figures of cholesterol, and you don't know. Because this cholesterol we are talking about, this fat we are talking about, is not the one visible under the skin. It's not the one I can see and say you are fat. It's not the one I can see and say you are plumpy. You have a lot, a lot of fat. It goes beyond just the physical look. It is not even the physical look. If, I'm, if, if I should be sincere, more than half of patients I have seen to manage hyperlipidemia are not obese. They are not fat, the way you will say it. Right? But at a point where they are seeing some signs and symptoms that we will get there, they had to go and do cholesterol tests. And that is when they saw that their value is really high and they needed to do something. And cholesterol is, this high cholesterol is one of the disease conditions that if, when you are on medication, you don't watch what you eat. It's like the medication will wipe away the fat. And what you eat will gradually return back the fat to the arteries. And that is why it is very important we have a knowledge of cholesterol and um, preventing hyperlipidemia with our nutrition. Now, on a closer look, slide four. Low density lipoprotein carries cholesterol to the tissue. There are different forms of cholesterol. There's the bad one, there's the other bad one, and there's the good one. Now, this bad one, other bad one, the good one, the three combined together is what we call total cholesterol. Sorry, the slide is not clear. Um, that other um, diagram there was to show you the breakdown and the acceptable figure after you've done your blood test. But any lab you do your blood test, we give you what is healthy figure. Now, the next slide. The next slide is showing us a normal artery and a plaque artery. The normal artery is the one, of course, you can see the whole cycle pure. Now, the plaque artery is the other one, fibrous plaque, that is having a lot of fats. And that is what I don't want us to have by ensuring we have a healthy diet. Now, the next slide. Causes or factors that increases the risk of hyperlipidemia. That's high fats in the blood. Number one is uncontrolled diabetes. You have been diagnosed with diabetes, you have been managing diabetes for a while. It is very important. Ideally, even when I'm seeing a diabetic patient, when we are counseling a dietary patient, when it comes to diets, we are extra strict on their diet just to prevent hyperlipidemia because we know when there's no caution, there might be trouble in that area. So when someone is, you are treating, you are on um, blood sugar medication, you have been diagnosed with diabetes, please ensure that you also watch out for your cholesterol level. Now, we also have obesity, sedentary habits. You are working 8 to 4, 8 to 5, 9 to 5, whatever time frame. And when you get to work, all you do is sit down at your table for four to five hours. And sometimes you don't get to stand up until you want to answer the call of nature. This is not the best practice for any individual. So what is advisable? Usually, psycho um, physiotherapist, optician, dietitian. Generally, when it comes to medical line, we advise that every two to three hours, you stand up from your table and you walk around. So sitting down at your table two, three, four, five hours is not the best. So, and that also we ensure that you are having an active lifestyle to prevent hyperlipidemia. On healthy eating habits, of course, we'll go in depth into that. Hereditary, when you have anybody in your family that have hyperlipidemia, there is a caution for you as a person. Then we also have age, smoking, excessive intake of alcohol. Other risk factors of high cholesterol, that's what high cholesterol will cause. We have heart attack, stroke. Why? Because blood cannot flow through your arteries. I explained with the aid of diagram how the cholesterol plague the arteries to prevent blood flow. And so, when I, I told you that when the heart cannot get blood to a particular place, then such, a, such cells in that place might start dying and that might lead to stroke. Then um, chest pain. If the arteries that supply your heart with blood are affected, you might have chest pain and other symptoms of coronary artery disease. Then coronary artery disease itself, heart attack, stroke. Similar to heart attack, a stroke occurs when the blood clot blocks blood flow to the parts of the brain. Now those, that's the picture on the slide. Symptoms of high cholesterol. High cholesterol doesn't cause any symptoms for most people. That's the trick, and that's the most important thing I want you to remember. It does not cause any symptoms. And that is why I've mentioned the risk factors. I've mentioned things that you should consider. Age, we are both 10, 20 years. Please check your cholesterol. If you know you eat junks, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, go for your cholesterol. We will still go indently on food that you, know, you should you know, cut on, watch out for, to ensure that you are eating to prevent hyperlipidemia. So, I want to read this, because I do hear some people... When, I, when we have a little chit chat on food, like, Madam, Ola, they call me Ola, you are too strict on food. That's one single king, one man now. Don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that. And it's very important to know that. When it comes to healthy living and your choice of what you eat, you know, what you eat is primarily what you put in your mouth yourself. True or false? It is not anybody enforcing it into your mouth, except in some disease condition when the person is having stroke. But what you eat normally is what you put into your mouth yourself. So why will you not consciously choose what is right? And sincerely, if you will agree with me, that healthy living, using the healthy nutritional lifestyle is not expensive, it's just decision. Decision and understanding of what you need, what your body needs. That is what is very important. 
Because as pastors, you know, workers in the vineyard, um, diligent child of God, you're working for God, you should be cautious of your body. Because without the body, the ministry cannot continue. You cannot do the work. And I would like to read one thing that I like quoting. And it goes thus, after graduating from Edinburgh University in Scotland at age 14, and leading a large Presbyterian congregation of over 1,000 at age 23, preacher Robert Murray McChain was working so hard that his health finally broke. Before dying at 29, he wrote, God gave me a message to deliver, and he was to write, Alas, I have killed the horse, and now I cannot deliver the message. That is why it is very important to take care of the horse, because it is not just a message. The horse is also needed to deliver the message. That's the main essence of these seminars. And I'm so grateful to the authority that deem it fit that this area should be checked in, because we can be so over-spiritualizing things, and we are neglecting what is actually making us spiritual, the body. Without the body, we cannot have a human being. And that is why we should consciously take care of it by choosing right what we eat. Next slide, please. Before I go to the next slide, Jim Rohn says, take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. Take care of your body. I want that to sink for a few seconds. Take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. Are you on any medication? See, when, when Jesus says no, like my mama will say, see, when Jesus will say no, take your medication. Why believing God and waiting on God for a miracle? Continue your medication. You're on blood pressure medication. You're on diabetes medication. Continue your medication. Ensure you are following the healthy living lifestyle. Now, prevention is better than cure. We should prevent hyperlipidemia. That's high cholesterol. And how do we do this? Exercise. Right? So, exercise doesn't necessarily have to be the one that you have to go to the gym. Yes, if you are, you are targeting something, yes, you might involve a gym and a specialist in that line. But if you are not, you're not, you don't want to trim your weights, you just want to keep fit, you can have exercise within your house. There are a lot of videos online to do five minutes workouts, seven minutes workouts, you know, 10 minutes workouts, depending on what, whichever. But all of this is very important, exercise, the lifestyle change, stop smoking, healthy hearts, so eating a heart healthy diet, staying at a healthy weight, there's a healthy weight for every individual in that area. Stay active instead of sitting too much, like I've explained in the lifestyle not being sedentary at work. Keep your stress level down, our mama has taken us on stress management. Get the right amount of sleep. Now the next slide. Now I want to go in depth into my own corner. My own corner, my calling. And that is, first of all, the oil you use. Our hoye. That's the number one culprit, because everybody eats from the hoye. Now, oil type, amount, and usage is the secret to number one way to prevent this cholesterol issue. And like I said, unsaturated fats should be choosed. If you see, I'm sorry, it's not clear. If you see where I cycled red, there's a place I cycle red. Because anytime you want to buy oil, I've seen people, I've counseled people, and when I'm telling them an example of oil to choose, they tell you, it's an expensive oil. I bought 10 liters for so, so, so number of thousands of naira. And I'll be like, no, ma, it is not the amount. It is the nutritional information that you need to check to know if this is unhealthy oil. And it's always written there, all the time. If it is okay, if it is not healthy, if it is all right, it is always written there. And my major key point is that when you are buying any oil, ensure you go to the saturated fat. It's always written there. Ensure that when, you're saturated, when you check the saturated fat, it should not be more than 15%. But the higher the saturated fat, the more you know that this oil is not healthy for you. The cheapest way, this one I'm saying is grammar, but the cheapest way is that any oil you have, put a little quantity in your fridge. If it forms any particle, it will form particle in your body. So you want to check if your oil is fine, no matter the amount, no matter how extra, extra it is. Some people will say extra, extra virgin. No matter how extra, extra it is, put a little quantity in your fridge. If it's from the tiniest particle, I'm not saying you should leave it on the floor, but on the fridge, then you know it's also from particle in your body. And that is what we call the plague that we initially discussed. All right? Now, no matter how good your oil is, ensure you use in moderation. Those areas whereby you use oil to cook and then, you know, the oil is forming layers with the soup. And when you want to fetch the soup, you have to drive away the rivers of oil. Those areas have passed. Use little quantity to cook your soup. When you watch when you go eating their food, do we usually see that kind of thing? No, now. Our oil should be in moderation. It should not be flowing on the food. Now, um, bleaching of oil. You see, no matter how good the oil is, you've bought the best oil in the world. Your saturated fat is okay. Your under -indica indicators are your polys unsaturated um, fig uh, figure, your poly mono unsaturated figure. All of these figures are perfect. But lo and behold, when you wanted to cook, you bleach the oil. You know the bleaching I'm saying now? Should I do practical? When you put oil on fire, you wait for it to get hot. You now pour your tomato. It's not what? Shh. And the good thing has evaporated, left with shafts, something that is so unhealthy for anybody, both the young and the, and the old. So as often as possible, I know our African culture food and soup, if that style is not followed, it will not, you will not get that taste. I know. And I do it once in a while, sincerely, right? But as often as possible, just once in a while, tweak your method of cooking. 
put the, um, so, um, the tomatoes on fire, add your little quantity of oil. I tell you, it's almost most times, like my boss in last week's one said, it's usually your combination of ingredients that gives the food flavor. But we are, no more than, we are not after flavor nowadays, so we are not after sweetness. Two of us. Nobody's giving me an answer. There's a rich flavor of food that might, not be, that might not be sweet. And a food can be sweet and might not have rich flavor. Somebody's not getting my deep rema. No problem. Now, cooking with oil above the smoking point can also change its health benefits. A smoking point is the temperature at which the oil starts to smoke and break down. Therefore, lose some nutritional value. That's according to Mayo Clinic, one of the good um, reference points in medical line. Now, I want to have another quote by Han Wegmore. It says, the food you eat can either be the safest and the most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. Next slide. Now, the fact on fat. You can see an example of, I have the three code, love it, limit it, and lose it. So what are the fats, should, what are the oil, fats and oil you should love? Avocado, um, fish, the oil you get from fish, um, oil that are good, that are, that are at a low in saturated fats. Then limit it, you can see butter in that range. And you can see some other things. Then lose it. You can, have, you can see your, the burger, the donuts, the cake, the raspberry cake, the vanilla cake, the cake, cake, cake. Then there's a, there's a um, sorry, it's not too clear. Okay, this is a bit clearer. There's coconut oil there. I don't want to go in depth, but the truth is that there has been some kind of discrepancies in um, the research world to know exactly where coconut oil stands. Because the truth is that when you access coconut oil, the ingredients in it is high in fat. But when it gets to the body, what's the picture? It has not been agreed on. And that's why there's a caution. Because some people run away from normal oil and run to coconut oil that it is healthy. It's also important I mention it that there's a caution on it. Even though it is healthy, it also has some health benefits. Now, eating right, continue. That's like, next slide. I've mentioned number one, your oil. Is anyone still with me? I mentioned number one, your oil. Then number two, limit all fried foods. Go for better and healthier cooking method. For example, boiling, grilling, and baking. Now, am I saying you should stop all fried food? No, it's not possible. Nah, because you're not yet diagnosed. No one is diagnosed here with hyperlipidemia, so I can't say you should stop it. But as someone ages, definitely, it is better to go for a healthier choice of um, eating. And the healthier choice of eating your of food is to ensure that you are limiting fried foods. Reduce pastries, either baked or fried. I don't want to do all of that. A caution on some hunger meats. You know, some people, they'll say, Red meat is bad, and they run to assorted. Only for them to now run back to the hospital with high cholesterol. There are some organ meats, what we call assorted, or rishi rishi. What we call assorted, that are really packed with fat. And if you are not cautious or cautious, you will definitely be accumulating this fat that is not our friend in the blood. So that is why there is a caution for every one of us. Treat your meat stock rightly. Now you can see, some people will say stock, some people will say brutes. Whichever you have it to be. That's, you know what I'm saying, mommies in the house. When you finish cooking your meat, that water is very important, right? But there's a way you should treat it. Either you, you boil your meat, you boil your chicken, you boil your beef, you boil your turkey, you boil your goat's meat. All of this food nowadays, the, the way the um, breeders are feeding them with what God knows is just to, for market value. So when you finish boiling, what you do is that you allow it to cool down. I, if I know I want to use it in another 10, 20 minutes, I put it in the freezer so that the fats, you agree with me, all will come, we congeal together on top of the water. You see that fat? It is not good for anybody. So that is why you should intentionally, like in that picture, you can see it. You should intentionally pack it out, trash it, and use the water. So even if some people, they say, when I want to eat my chicken, I remove the skin before cooking. Sometimes there are some fat that is in the chicken. So you should also treat your brute or your stock this way. Ensure you remove that fat. So that is what I mean by treat your meat stock rightly. Now the next slide, reduce processed food. Number seven, as age setting, gradually replace fat food fatful food with less fat. Like I said, a young person, five years, 10 years, 15 years, that needs all the energy should go for, you know, food that are, high, that are rich in healthy fats. But as age sets in, because, of course, your activity level is reducing. For example, somebody that is 60 years, your high is 60 years, your heart is 60 years, your liver is 60 years. Everything internally and externally is of your age. So you should be ensure that you are managing this, you know, body parts appropriately. So as they said, like I said, gradually replace fat food with less fat or fat free food. For example, fats, full fat yogurt to Greek yogurt is an example. Food fat cream, full cream milk, sorry, for younger ones and field milk for elderly. I will not mention example of milk here. I'm not here to sell any products. But there is no milk you get you want to buy in the market. It is always labor. It's either you have full cream, field milk, instant field milk, or skinned milk. And these three types of milk is just telling you the level of fat in it. Now, full cream has all the fats, and that is why it's sweetest. Right? Now, field milk has a reduced fat and even has fat from plants. That is why it is not as sweet as full cream. 
Now, skimmed milk is, um, is very tasteless, like you're taking chalk, because all the fat has been extracted, almost all, not all, almost all the fat has been extracted from it. So, at any age group or any condition that you are managing, consider the kind of milk you should take. I am not against any you using milk. It's a very excellent source of nutrients. In fact, it's one of the food that from someone is, it's one of the food that as soon as you get to this part of the world, you are giving birth to on earth till your last day. It's one of the food that you should take all through life. That is the power in milk. Now, mayonnaise, butter, whole milk, ice cream, and the likes should be on location, of course. Then, next slide. Watch out for some fatty soup, soup especially when there's already a predisposing factor. This is where I usually fight with my patients you know, in the consulting room. Because, normally speaking, our environment here, most of our soup is oil. Thank you, ma. Am I saying you should stop? No. I'm just saying there should be, you know, a marrying of both fatty soup, soup rich in vegetable. If at all you want to make the fatty soup, for example, you're see, you can put grain, you can put ugu, you can put bitter leaf, you can put, you can make, add green, just add green color to it. Then I'll know a little bit of green is going in to ensure there's a counter effect or make it a bit healthier. All right? Now watch out for this soup like, I, like it's in the slide. Replace with vegetable soup or incorporate vegetable in fatty soup as often as possible. And I made mention of example of vegetable soup. Now the last slide, which is be fruitful. Be fruitful and take more of vegetable-based diet, which incorporate fiber-rich foods. You know, I was talking to someone that was um, having stage four in cancer, and um, I was trying to enlighten the person on antioxidant-rich food, phytochemicals that usually from nutritional um, side we used to co-manage the person. And something came to my mind. I said, it is not accidental that God planted Adam in Garden of Eden. He didn't plant. He didn't, he didn't make Adam to live in zoo. He told him to. He made him what? And what is in the garden? Vegetable, plants. Are you getting my point? So that is the importance of how we should incorporate anything you can find in the garden in our daily eating. Anything that you can find in the garden. That is why you should incorporate it because that is the source for healthy living. In conclusion, that's the next, last slide. Moderation is a new liberty. Be active. Mental activeness is not the same as physical activeness. That you are mentally active throughout your day, you know, being calculated with your system, solving issues, addressing matters. It's not still the same as physical activeness. So stand up by your table, take a walk. Five minutes, 10 minutes, take a walk, come back to your table. If you're 20 years or older, have your cholesterol tested. I, in fact, because this was coming, I needed to go back to our lab in the hospital to check my cholesterol, to be ensured that I am not coming here to preach when I am also guilty. So I had to do my, do my cholesterol test yesterday morning. So if you are 20 years and older, please check your cholesterol. And if you See that your cholesterol is above normal level. Ensure that you see your medical practitioner. Also know that diet is very important in managing cholesterol. High cholesterol is sneaky and silent. You could have too many lipids in your blood and not know it for many years. A simple blood test is the only way to find out. It affects all ages, including those who are active and feel healthy. So you're not sure, please go for a test and ensure you are free. Please, I would like to, make, to welcome any question. Thank you very much. So, Ma, if I can get your question right, yes, when, anytime I preach fruit, vegetable, I get this concern of chemicals. But the truth is that there are still some places, there are still some places in any food product we have nowadays, there are still some places, some points, some corners, some locations that are known for selling the right thing. It might be a bit more expensive, it might be a bit more stressful, it might not be something you can handily get around you, but they still exist in all food items. So those things, those places are, are what I think we should patronize more. Because if these ones that we know that they are not... Um, they are not doing it right. For example, my husband loves bananas, and there was this woman that usually used chemical to coat her banana. You buy a green banana just now. Before you get home, it's all melted. He told her first time, second time, after a she she stop. And he gets it from the right, a better place, right? And that lady we get, he told her that this thing, I know you're using chemical, it's not right. I won't buy from you again. So it's she we know. And if every other person follows suit, such a person will run out of business and get bad business, and definitely in the right thinking, should go back to the right thing. Then going, going by your second question, balanced diets. You know, we do say that balanced diet is a food that has all amount of nutrients in the right proportion, uh, right proportion at the right time. The truth is that balanced diet is individualistic. What is balanced diet for you might not be balanced diet for me. So it is thoroughly individualistic, especially when we now have a picture of a disease condition. For example, maybe the person is even having dementia, Parkinson's disease, or diabetes, hypertension, any other concern. So what is balanced for that individual? is different for another individual. So usually when the person has a concern of what is actually balanced, then you have to consult your dietitian, whereby you can have a discussion on any concern, then wrap it up, and he or she will give you a meal plan or a meal guide to ensure you're having a balanced diet. Did I answer your question, mommy? 
Thank you, ma'am. Any other question? Thank you so much. Now, if I can get the first question right. You see this, then say, then say, online. I want to ask, who said? What authority said? Because if I should understand what you're saying, is this general viral audio message of a biochemist that said blood group, this, you know, it's this. She said blood group. My son blood group. Because he said some children we keep having kata because they take milk. Because that one, I wanted to hammer it and be sure that she's correct in my own view. So it's not correct. The truth is that every individual, we differ. What works for you might not work for me. What irritates you? For example, we can eat from the same place of vegetable, and I'm fine, but you run, you run, your stomach was running throughout the night because your body differs to my body. Does that mean your blood group is rejecting that vegetable? No. At that moment, psychologically speaking, physiologically speaking, some things might happen. Then that you eat a food, you are reacting to it, does not necessarily that mean all blood group of that kind of person might react to that food. I don't know if I'm answering your question. In a nutshell, before we go with information online, you know, Anybody can go online and say something. If I want to glow in another one month, I will go and say, it's a leaking one particular stone. It cures all diseases. And I will prove my point. Am I communicating myself? I will prove all my points. I don't usually go with anything online. If I want to do my research, what I do is I go on specific journals, what they have gone to lab to test. Not on rats, not speculations, not ideologies. So yes, it might exist for some particular people that when you take vegetable, you have itchy body. When you don't take vegetable, you are fine. When you take this particular fruit, you have runny nose, runny high, um, painful this, painful that. But it should not be generalized unless if it is backed up with facts. Then that is what we can now use to preach to the whole world. That blood group O has speculations with your food. Because if you go online with this blood group story, you will have conflicting ideas. So till we have something standing, we cannot stand behind one story. Do you understand? Do you understand? Then the second question on pastor timing. You know, there's one thing. I usually hammer. Number one, don't joke with water. The body is over 70% of water, so you should not run out of water. That one is handy. True of us, sir. True. Then number two option is what I call fresh juice and smoothies. You might not have the time to sit and put something in your mouth, but when you have your smoothie, your fresh juice that you made from, that you picked from house, you refrigerated, you can have it between early mornings before afternoon. And these smoothies are always packed with nutrients. Smoothies, let me break it down, man. sir. Smoothie is when you take two, three, four, five fruits and vegetables and you blend them together. When you blend them together, and you take that way, it's smoothie. But when you extract the juice, the water from it, then that's when you call it juice. So usually I advocate for smoothie. That's blend it all together with the shaft, with the, sometimes with the skin, with the peel, sometimes with the seed, sometimes. You blend all together, you refrigerate it, and you have that as your, as your food, in case you don't have the time to sit down and eat main meal. With that, you are nourishing the body, and you're also on the go. That's how I feel you can walk around your timetable at the same time, ensuring you're doing the right when it comes to food. Any other question? That means you want to skip, you are, when you say skip meals after having, having heavy breakfast, number one, I will not advocate for heavy breakfast. Because when your breakfast is heavy, you feel sleepy. In my own case, if my breakfast is heavy or too oily, you, you know what you are doing to your body. You are telling the brain, there is a lot of work to do in the stomach, oh, shut down some of the cells. So what the brain is, it diverts energy to the stomach for digestion. And before you know what, you start feeling sleepy. That is why you feel sleepy after eating heavy food, in some people's case, for example, me. So I don't number one, I will not advocate for heavy breakfast. And uh, there's this saying that eat breakfast as king, eat lunch as this, eat dinner as slave. That does not follow for everyone. I would say eat your meal according to your activity level. If you know you are the kind of person that when you eat every breakfast, maybe by 7 or 7.30 or 8, you will get to work and sit for another two to three hours. I will not advocate every breakfast. But for example, if you are a site worker, that after you eat breakfast, in another two to three hours, you are doing something very strenuous, then definitely go for the every breakfast. In fact, if you don't allow your lunch to slack, you are getting so your working ability, your work time, your type, the type of work you do, determine your frequency or type of food you should eat. Now, skipping um, lunch or next meal because you took every breakfast will not be relative to you. Because the issue with skipping meal is that if you are not careful or cautious, there's a word I want to use, disciplined enough, you might be tempted to gather what you did not eat for lunch, for dinner. She did not eat lunch, let me have extra two spoons. Whereas, assuming you ate lunch, you won't have done that much. Do you understand the picture? So if you are disciplined and you go with strictly with what you should have for dinner, then fine. That's a way of keeping it, tr trimming the whole body to ensure no excess fats. Did I answer your question, ma? Thank you. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, if you are not fasting. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Why is that? It is known that you should have your dinner by 6, 7, and your breakfast is by 7, 8. So you're having a space of, say, 12 hours. That's half of a day, and that is why they call it breaking of fast. That is why the name breakfast comes. So, and that is why it is advocated that it might not be large, it might not be a king size. Just put something healthy into your stomach. 
because it's the most important food of the day. Your body is waiting for that food. But if you're on a fast, fine. Holy Spirit is your help. Then for the other ones, that consult us at our medical stand. Thank you so much.